Welcome to Charlie Rick LLC. In this video, I took a 1930 uh, year table. It was stained wood. As on um, the chairs were stained, the fabric was um, old, ancient. Um, my wife had uh, sanded on it and took too much off. I was gonna re-varnish it, but it got ruined on the first sand on top. So then I was like, okay, we started looking online. We found the design we wanted. Uh, and I figured I'd let y'all know what we did. Uh, first step is to lightly sand everything. So you want to go through and sand the whole table down. You don't have to take it all the way down. You just want to take the gloss off. Or they got like a gloss remover you can use if you don't want to sand. I sand it mine. Then you take a paint thinner and you put it on a rag and wipe everything down. Well, then I used the bonding primer and oil based bonding primer because we're going over a stain. And I feel like an oil base is usually always what you use over like a lacquer, a stain, or a gloss, or something like that. And then you want to have a bonding primer because of the fact that it's going to stick. Alright, so then after, after sanding everything, you want to get you like a, a primer gun and an HVLP uh, air sprayer so that you can spray your primer uh, out of the primer gun and use the HVLP sprayer for like your chairs and your legs and stuff. Well, on top, after I painted it, they had like a little sand groove. I was like, okay, I got to figure that out. So what I did is I put like four coats heavy on top of the table, and then I come back through and sanded it with like a 320 grit on an orbital sander. All right, then I smoothed it down after I painted everything, of course. Then I come back and I wiped it with a paint thinner after sanding it, and I just put another heavy coat on top of it. Well, then if that don't take out my sand marks, I'll lightly sand again, come back and throw another heavy coat on top of it with the bonding primer not with just the paint because you ain't ready for the paint you want to just try to get everything set up for it so another thing like if you're spraying with your HVLP sprayer all right and you go to paint your your, your chairs and stuff because you got to prime them with the bonding primer too all right you want to make sure you mix it I always think like I don't know one third paint two thirds thinner you don't really want to go half and half because it's still too thick it's going to spray out and spit a little bit so you want it more like almost like water but not quite you want it almost like water that way you like ain't no way I'm about to spray that you want it almost like water because it's gonna spray better it's gonna be a lot more air and less paint so it spreads it out better you want to make sure you put paint thinner in it and penetral or some type of I don't know lay down chemical that you could throw with your paint that allows it to lay down without less runs okay so I'm gonna show y'all what I'm doing here All right. so you see the table here all right, I had a bunch of little grooves in it. This is what I was talking about when I put a bunch of primer coats on it, come back and sanded it, and put another heavy coat on it. So now I believe I got it whipped, but if I have more grooves, I'm going to sand it some more, or I might like it like it is. This is the orbital sander I use. You can buy them at Home Depot, you know, 320 grit sandpaper. The reason why I chose to, to spray mine is I really didn't feel like getting all into, like, stripping the stain and, restaining stuff and then I'd have had to keep it in the same stain color coat just because of the fact that I'd have had to bring it all the way down to wood and then I found out this wasn't even stain this was um I mean wood this was plastic and the top had a top layer of wood but it was press board so then I was like man shit I don't like none of that I you know but whatever so I'm at a point now to where I just said screw it I went ahead and primed everything what I'm actually going to do is keep my primer coat on here I'm going to keep the primer coat on here and I'm going to take and put a um what what is this a ultra cover gloss clear on there i'm gonna put like three or four cans of this and put a nice shine because i like the primer coat look and i want to leave the bottom almost looking chalky a little bit so i'll probably put like a flat paint or something down there some type of chalk paint on the legs and on the side but on the top and stuff i want to keep it shiny so i'm gonna spray this on all the chairs and everything i'm gonna show y'all what the chairs look like too so um what I did is I brought this outside, separate room, different colors. I'm going gray with the uh, table. I'm going white with the chairs. So the chairs don't look too bad. They actually come out. We don't have the, the stuff for it yet. You know, that way I'm spraying it with that HV because, I mean, really, you go to brushing all this stuff, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to end up with a lot of brush marks. And um, I don't want brush marks in my stuff. I want my stuff to be sprayed, make it look real nice. You know, and if you do brush it, just put a lot of extra paint thinner in it, penetral, that way the brush marks is minimal. You don't really want to have a lot of brush marks in it. So after I'm done with all this, I'm going to lightly sand it one more time. I'm going to come through and throw that clear on top of it, and then it's going to be done. My wife is inside doing the, 
the seat covers we're gonna go with like a gray and white uh, seat cover design maybe I'll do another video uh, on how that looks or something like that it'll probably be on my Facebook or maybe on my web page www.charlerick.com or charlerick construction LLC on Facebook uh, I appreciate any likes uh, I'll be posting this soon thanks